Welcome back to Never Enough Novels. It is one of my favorite times of the year when all of the new Christmas romances are being published. I have a huge list of new Christmas books that are coming out in 2024 that I want to share with you guys. So instead of just putting them all into one enormous video, I've decided to split this into three parts. So today we're going to go through part one and I'm doing these kind of by release date. So most of the books that I'm sharing today are either already published or like publishing very soon so that you can grab these as soon as you want if you're interested in them. I have six books to share with you today. Most of them are kind of sweet Hallmark-like Christmas romances and then I have one particularly steamy Christmas romance at the end. All of the books will be linked down below so if you decide that you want to buy them from Amazon you can help support this channel as well. And make sure you hit like on this video and subscribe so that you'll see the future parts of this Christmas romance series. First book I'm sharing is The Holiday Cottage by Sarah Morgan. I finished this uh, probably two weeks ago and still absolutely cannot get over it. It was the perfect Christmas romance to kick off the season. Sarah Morgan has become one of my go-to authors and I love her so much because she focuses just as much on the female relationships in her book as she does on any romantic ones. In The Holiday Cottage, we have three women who are the star of the story. Two of them are a mother and daughter who are running their own winery, and the third is a young woman who has been helping as their event planner. Imogen is kind of a loner. She has very little family. Um, her only family is like a mother who just has been very inconsistent and not exactly the loving mother that you would hope for someone. So when Dorothy, the owner of the winery, realizes this, she invites Imogen to stay at her cottage for the season. Now Dorothy's daughter is not happy when her mom makes this decision and we kind of find out there's some connections to Imogen that make them uneasy about kind of having her around but when Imogen realizes a family secret they kind of have an opportunity to come together. So this definitely has that whole found family type trope. It's got a really handsome vet and some adorable animals that make an appearance as well. So an overall just fantastic holiday romance. It's sweet and adorable and will just give you all the warm fuzzy feelings. Next up is All I Want For You by Fallon Ballard. Get ready for this one bed trope holiday romance. Our story begins when two romance writers and professional enemies end up at the same inn a few days before Christmas. To make matters worse, there is an inevitable snowstorm that forces them to be stuck there for a while with no way to leave. And of course, they discover that there isn't enough room at the inn, so they will be forced to share a room and share a bed. But they're both struggling a bit with their writing, and honestly, maybe this really unique scenario can help them both get out of their respective ruts that they're in. This sounds like just an enormous mashup of all of my favorite tropes and you throw in the Christmas aspect as well and you've got a book that I cannot wait to read. The next book is another one that I've read already and that is The Christmas Crush by Noelle Douglas. If you're a baker or you love to read books about bakeries, this will absolutely be the holiday romance for you. This book features a small town baker named Lawrence who lives in New Hope, PA, which is actually a real place and not too far from me, which was pretty exciting. And his bakery is being threatened by this like cookie conglomerate that is wants to build a new location in New Hope. That project is being led by Elena, who is one of their like marketing executives. So she comes to New Hope to try and convince the people there that this new cookie company will be a great addition to the town. And her and Lawrence immediately clash at the first town hall meeting and he's trying to let everyone know that this is going to threaten their businesses and bring in more chains into New Hope and all these small businesses are going to go out of business if this, if this is allowed. So they immediately do not hit it off. But over time, as she spends more time there and spends more time with Lawrence, kind of getting to know him and his bakery, they notice that there is a definite attraction between the two and some friendly competition might just lead to sparks flying between them. But at the end of the day, she still works for the enemy and she has a job to do to make this new location successful while Lawrence wants to keep his bakery afloat. These two need to figure out how they can handle this unique situation and end up in a relationship together, but also doing what's best for them professionally. This was just such a sweet book. I gave it five stars. I just ate it up. Like I loved reading all about kind of the small town bakery versus like the cookie conglomerate and how they each handle business differently. 
And the relationship between Elena and Lawrence was just absolutely adorable. They fell head over heels so fast and it was really cute watching them kind of do all these Christmassy things together and figure out this new relationship. I highly recommend The Christmas Crush. Uh, it's definitely one that you're gonna wanna add to your list if you're a fan of any sort of Hallmark movie. Next up we have I'll Be Gone for Christmas by Georgia Boone. If you are a fan of the movie The Holiday, then this is the Christmas romance for you. It is kind of based on the same idea where two individuals do a like house slash apartment swap just for the Christmas season. Clover and Bee are our main characters and they each have a different reason for needing a, a change of pace in their life. Bee is looking for a quiet retreat to leave behind her busy tech job. And Clover can't stand to be around her Christmas obsessed small town while she is feeling kind of down in the dumps. So the two swap places and also essentially their lives for a bit. Bee starts getting to know Clover's ex-fiance while Clover spends a lot of time with Bee's sister. And both women seem to find exactly what they're looking for and maybe more this holiday season. I love that this is both like a black representation and queer representation all wrapped up in one holiday romance. I think we need more of these. So this is one that I'm really looking forward to reading. And like I said, if you're a fan of this like holiday swap, house swap idea, I think this would be a really fun romance for you this season. Next up is a book called Kiss Me at Christmas by Jenny Bayless. Now Jenny has kind of become known for her Christmas romances. She usually has a new one coming out each year and I'm always excited to see what her new novel is going to be. This year's in particular is fantastic because it features a middle-aged woman as the main character, which I think we need more of in our holiday romances. Harriet is less than thrilled about the whole Christmas season this year, especially because her teenage daughter is going to be spending the holidays in New York City. So she doesn't really have anyone around to spend Christmas with and figures she'll just lay low and kind of avoid the season this year. And one wine-fueled night, she kind of consoles herself with a massively out of character one night stand. And this is a romance novel, so of course that comes back to haunt her. <laughs> After she volunteers to help direct the local theater's like final Christmas performance, she discovers that the owner's lawyer is none other than the guy that she slept with a little while ago, and he is not exactly thrilled with how things went between them. This may be the holiday magic will help bring her kind of out of her funk and give her exactly what she needs this season. Like I said, Jenny Bayless is always a reliable Christmas author for me, so I think this is going to be another hit from her. Last up is my spicy Christmas romance that I can't wait to share with you guys. That is a Jingle Bell Mingle by Sierra Simone and Julie Murphy. Julie and Sierra have now teamed up for three years running to craft these deliciously steamy holiday romances. They always have some sort of connection to the adult film industry, whether it's actresses that work in there or directors writing these type of scenes. So it gives our classic tropes a steamy twist. In Jingle Bell Mingle, a one night stand between two people leads to an unexpected roommate situation, which might ultimately lead to the love of their lives. Sunny is a part-time adult film star who recently sold her first screenplay to the Hope Channel, but with a looming deadline, it's feeling impossible to meet their requirements. So she decides to return to the Christmas obsessed town of Christmas Notch, Vermont, to get some new inspiration. Isaac, on the other hand, is a former boy band who is now the owner of the town's like largest mansion, like an old historic home. He is planning to hole up there for kind of the month of December and attempt to write his first holiday album because this, his studio has been like begging him for new music. So he's planning to just hunker down and focus on that for the while. When these two end up meeting at a mutual friend's wedding, Isaac and Sunny hook up and he decides to offer her a place in the mansion to stay while she's trying to get inspiration to finish her screenplay. They don't expect to cross paths much because it's an enormous house, but when they realize they're each in need of some creative inspiration, they decide to turn to each other for help. So if you're looking for that steamy holiday romance with lots of open door scenes, plenty of spice, a Jingle Bell Mingle will be the one for you. I hope you are just as excited as I am to start getting into these Christmas romances and make sure you stay tuned to this channel and subscribe so that you'll see parts two and three in the next couple of weeks.